Hello, uh, welcome to my talk. Um, I'm Peter, and I would like to talk about a graph hopper. And well, change slightly the title to uh, fit the session uh, at scale. How an integer area or an area of integer arrays helped graph hopper scaling. <clears throat> so first, a bit of introduction. Um, the components of an online map or of a map in general or in your car navigation system is uh, some drawing component, some geocoding and the routing component. So, and uh, Graph Hopper is all about routing. It finds the best path between coordinates. We have an online um, kind of a demonstration um, to, sh to show the capabilities of Graph Hopper. It's now a fully featured maps application, and we are using geocoding, uh, a for geocoding, a, a photon, which is powered by Elasticsearch. And maybe there are some guys here who uh, have interest in, in this project called Photon. But today I, I would like to speak about Graph Hopper, which is only about uh, routing. And here you see some typical uh, maps application. On the left hand, um, uh, some address search uh, with auto suggestions, and, and then you have some tiles. And, and this tiny line is the important part. It's graph hopper and the instructions on the left side also. And that's what graph hopper is. And um, also graph hopper. Um, uh, that's what Graph Hopper looks like, and, and Graph Hopper is an open source and fast road routing uh, library and server. So you cannot only embed this into your products, and, uh, but you can also use it as a black box uh, routing ser service. It is completely written in Java. It runs uh, on the server, on the desktop, on Android, uh, through normal Java, uh, uh, JVM. Um, but there are also some experiments um, with, with a JVM in the browser, browser, so we can run it offline in the browser, which uh, um, this, uh, it's kind of a weird, but um, a nice a use case would be, for example, hybrid uh, routing, where you can offload the service and, and do the routing on the client if there's no internet connection or whatever else. So it's not just an experiment, it's also kind of a, um, yeah, kind of an interesting use case. And uh, we also have a not yet published port of, of Graph Hopper for iOS. So you can run it offline on iOS. It's, pr it's even pretty fast there. And uh, well, we have a really me memory efficient um, um, data structures inbuilt, and and all the graphs uh, are, or all the APIs we um, we offer are mostly easy to use, or we are trying as hard as possible to make them easy to use. Um, yeah, and also the low-level API is built to be flexible, so you can just grab one part and use it in your products for a c completely different use case or whatever else or uh, replace the storage with your own storage system and something like this. Um, it handles OpenStreetMap data by default. It is business friendly as it is Apache licensed and we are for consulting and support for this. It has many, many unit and integration tests and also performance and, and load tests. So uh, you're on the SECO side. If you hack and change something in GraphHopper and you cannot only do this, you cannot only um, replace a component of Graph Hopper, but you can also ensure that this mostly works as you can run the unit tests for those components. Um, just an overview of what you can do. You can do it, use it for auto routing or for distance matrix calculations. So it's, you have lots of points, you want to know all the distances between all the points. It's quite interesting for logistics or, um, or um, 
ride sharing or something like this, or taxi uh, companies. Um, it can be even used for sim simulation or games. Think about uh, Scotland Yard uh, as simulated game or in a, uh, for virtual reality kind of games and, and so on. Um, how many of you have used uh, graph databases? Okay, not that much. Um, um, how many of you have uh, experience in, in Geo stuff and, and like spatial? Okay, also not that much. I, I would give you a bit of introduction. Um, in, um, introduction of um, how we map real world into some some data structure. So we are we are using graphs for this, and we are mapping the junctions to nodes, and the connections between the junctions are our streets, uh, and called edges. And the nodes and edges have properties like coordinates or names, and and so on. And um, well, now we need to find uh, um, now the the work for graph hopper is to find the best way from in the road graph from A to B, from one junction to another. Um, from one point to another point is a bit more complex, but for the sake of simplicity, I um, expect it to be it a junction. Um, another question is why. We are doing this in Java. Um, I was asked this a bit a lot, and so I normally answer with "Why not?" Uh, at last, at my first talk, and this is my second talk, and 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 I answered "Why not?" But or yeah, I answered with "I'm stupid and lazy," or even with uh, "In PHP, too many people would have contributed." And well, today we will learn the truth. It's all about tooling and and also my stupidity. So uh, C++ compiling is really, really slow. And even if you execute Java compi compiler through Maven, you're faster. And yes, you can optimize this for C++, but <coughs> at the end, Java's, uh, Java compiler is really faster. And also, Java is a lot easier for me to run, test, deploy, debug, and profile, and the combination, so you can debug and production, or profile in production, uh, with really no overhead in performance or in, in, in usability. And I tried to set up a, a similar um, tooling uh, for C++ um, and, and also D um, for two weeks. Um, but I did not really find an open source IDE or open source tools which gave me the same power and same quality I needed. So, yeah, I'm lazy. And, well, in, for, for D, it's a bit an exception because D is a really young language, and, but it's also an excellent language. But that tooling was really not that good in, in two years ago. So, I gave up. And you uh, often hear, or I, I was asked, oh yeah, but Java is slow. And, and you know all the funny jokes about Java. But slow compared to what? And, and um, GraphHub finds best route through the entire Europe uh, data in under 50, millisec 50 milliseconds. And for distance matrix calculation, it's even a lot less. So Java is not really slow. And I, get, uh, I will do a bit risky thing. I will do a demonstration. Um, on the internet and, and show you what I mean. So we have graphable maps, uh, you, you know this, and we are in the, um, how's this club called? Fan. France, with, with double N, I think this was. Yeah. And we want to go to Marseille. And we have the route. And you can even calculate this for uh, for uh, for bikes, and you will see uh, the elevation data 
right here. And yeah, one, one funny thing is you can, you can drag and zoom and see the hill there. Now, what I really want to show you is, um, or what I wanted to, to, to give a, a bit of feeling that GraphHub is not really slow and it's entire in Java. Um, yeah, and, and, and a new feature, for example, was in the last release that we now uh, can award hills for, um, for bikes and, and for others as well, which is interesting for um, electronic cars and so on. So it's quite a short demonstration, um, but I hope you got what I mean. So another question is, or another, yes, another question was, is Java a memory hog or isn't Java a memory hog? Um, and yes, it is compared to C, C++ and so on. And the main reason is that we have no, um, no uh, reference less uh, classes uh, in Java, which is really a pain. And, and now I would like to show you what structs are. Um, so in C++ and C, I think, you can store a point which consists of latitude, longitude, uh, in an array just really compact in, in, in this form um, where the point is really, where the first point comes uh, before the second and so on. So it's really um, uh, compact and in Java you have to uh, always reference to some, some, some kind of memory elsewhere which is not really cache friendly and has the problem of, of this, this area which, which consists only of the reference which is waste of memory. And, and the problem is now why Java does not have these things is that it would introduce uh, copy semantics in Java. And um, for example, if you would, ha would, would um, add a point in another array, then you have a kind of a problem. You, you think they are the same, but you copy them. You, ha you would have to copy them if you would use the C++ structs-like thing. And in Java 9, we will hopefully see some, some kind of, they are called value types, and you can read more about this from John Rose um, in, his, in, in one blog post uh, one month ago. Until then, we do two things in GraphHopper to avoid wasting memory. The first thing is we scale with an array of um, byte or integer arrays, and the second, is to make all of this easy usable um, for the for the developer. We are using the flyweight part pattern, and to introduce you why we are using some something like uh, an integer array, I will um, yeah I will start with how would you implement a, a, a simple in-memory storage key-value storage in Java? You will just you just need the hash map with a string as key and an object as value. There, there are quite some problems. You have you waste memory because you are storing the key. For example, for a list, you do not need to store the integer value, right? It's just an index. So here you're wasting, or sometimes it's necessary to waste, but you're you're kind of wasting the memory for this. And also, you need the the object reference. Um, which I explained in the previous slide, uh, because you are um, allocating a big array and then you have the array full of references pointing to the object. Additionally, resizing of a um, hash map um, requires rehashing and the cost re reallocation of the underlying data structure of the hash map. And still, this hash map is limited to two billion objects. Um, some ideas, uh, as I said, you can use a list to avoid storing the key and also you avoid rehashing. Um, then you can use the byte array and, de or, or, and serialization to, 
to store an object there and avoid the costly um, object references. Additionally, you can use an array of byte arrays to append segments of byte array, or, or a segment is a byte array, and you append this array um, to, uh, to avoid re, uh, costly uh, reallocations for resizing. So instead of here you have a big array and now you need to increase the size, uh, then you would need another really big array. Um, think in terms of millions and that, or billions or whatever, and, and then you would have to copy this and instead of this costly uh, um, and memory wasting operation, you're just appending one megabyte and then using the sole structure for your list. And this also allows for more than two billion items or objects. We have an interface called data access for this, which solves all the problems. Additionally, we can um, use arrays of byte buffers um, to, to do this um, thing off heap or um, to do this on, uh, with a memory map technique so we can uh, use it for offline navigation on mobile devices. Um, of course, there are problems that this uh, data access is like a really large array and, and, the, and the access is more complex than with a hash map. And so it's not really what, what probably what you should do when you want to scale, because there are lots of generic solu solutions for you. There's a nice project called MapDB, which provides convenient access to a map interface. And there are a bunch of other projects you can check out if you want to use some kind of a large array or large um, data structures for, in, for Java or off-heap off uh, off um, data structures and so on. And the te technique I described, um, the, the arrays of integer arrays or arrays of byte arrays or whatever, it's, it's used in nearly all uh, NoSQL databases uh, written in Java. Um, yeah, like, like you see in HBase and, and so on, I think. And yeah, we use a flyweight pattern to, uh, yeah, to reverse the graph, which avoids creation of, of new objects due to deserialization. Now, we, we need to fetch an object and create an object from the byte array or from the integer array and, and create objects. And, and because we want to avoid this, we, we are just reusing the objects and, and apply the flyweight pattern like described um, here. So we, we are setting some, um, the, the graph explorer to some node, and then we are iterating over all neighbors of, those, uh, of this node. And then we, can, uh, then we have access to all the properties um, of, the, of the specific edge. Yeah, I will skip this. This is more important. Uh, do your own benchmarks. So what, don't trust me or anyone on the web. Do your own benchmarks and, and do them correct, correctly, not like me, as Alexei Shibilev uh, in 2009 has um, commented on my blog. The technique described in this post is ultimately, ultimately broken. It also contradicts with the best practices of measuring the Java performance. So... Um, to avoid learning by shame and pain, you should really uh, try to understand how you measure correctly, and there are tools like GMH, or use profilers and so on, and you should really make use of them. Yes, this is, I have to skip, sorry, um, because I would like to um, thank you. I think we have now some time for questions. Uh, okay. Uh, any questions? Unfortunately, we don't have that much time for questions, but... I'm just going to say, it looked like you skipped over the bit that I was really interested in, which was the actual algorithm for finding the paths in the 
the massive uh, network of nodes and edges that you've created in these data structures. Can you just like really, really quickly explain the algorithm, maybe? Uh, well, we are using a kind of a Dijkstra, and, and this is modified. It's, 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 there are some speed-up uh, techniques for uh, road uh, graphs, like uh, we are using contraction hierarchies. It's, it's some, it introduces some additional edges. And uh, on query time, it can then ignore some, some unimportant nodes, and so it avoids traversing all the nodes, and so it's a really uh, boost for especially large queries. So we can really scale not only for cities or countries, but also for continental size. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Otherwise, you can always obviously talk uh, just on the site as well. Okay. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks.